Hello and good morning, friends. Today, I want to talk to you about something very important, but you know, not a lot of people ever really think about. And that is, why are two chamber septic tanks required nowadays? So, septic tanks come in a variety of shape, sizes, and composition. Now, most commonly nowadays, what you're going to find is a two chamber, 1500 gallon tank made of concrete. Now, you might be asking, why? Right? One real easy answer is it's a uh, code. Maryland State requires that your tank be at least 1,500 gallons in two chambers. Beyond code though, the size of that tank and having two chambers is actually really, really beneficial for you as a homeowner. So I wanna kinda of get into a little bit about what would you have expected to see in older homes and why are we transitioning to these two chamber tanks and what are the benefits of having a two chamber tank versus a single chamber tank? So let's kinda of start with a little bit more of what would you have expected to see back in the day? So if we were to look at a home that was built before like 2012, 2013, we would have expected to see a single chamber tank, usually between a thousand gallons and 1500 gallons, depending on where you're at, house size, site conditions, etc. Most commonly in our area, you would see a thousand gallon tank with a single clean out on it, right? You wouldn't really see the risers. And that was okay back in the day. It's still kind of okay now. Like if you have an older tank that has just a clean out, don't don't panic, right? You should get a riser, but don't don't feel like you have to do anything immediately. Now, with these thousand gallon tanks, usually you would see this on houses from size of two to four. Most of the homes, four bedrooms or plus, would have a 1250, 1500, or 2000 gallon tank. They still would have been a one chamber tank, but they would have been quite large. Now, the septic tank, as we've discussed previously, its goal is to capture all of the solids in the system. So you flush a toilet, run a sink, bathtub, you name it, all that debris is gonna go down the sewer line and into the tank. From there, the solids will fall to the bottom, so your heavy stuff will form sludge, liquid in the middle, scum, which is all your floating stuff, will stay up top. So as you flush the toilet, all that debris goes to the tank, the tank settles out all that solids, and then the liquid goes off onto the absorption system. Now with a one chamber tank no matter how well you take care of it a little bit of that debris will work its way out of the tank and into the drain fields that debris is what we refer to as biomat right and now biomat is a fancy way of saying bi biologic material and it's real sticky it's like poo right and so what will happen is that little bit that leaves the tank will work its way into the box and into the drain fields and it basically tars the inside of the trenches basically making it to where nothing can get out and those trenches start to hold more and more water. An excess, excessive amount of water can also cause oversaturation in the drain field, which can lead to failure too. But at least in our state, the guidance from the health department in the state is that the leading cause of failure is going to be through the biomap. When you have a single chamber tank, there's no real additional steps taken to remove that debris modifications can happen right you can install a pvc baffle with an effluent filter and that can help to assist and alleviate some of that additional debris from exiting the tank but it doesn't really solve 100 percent. no system will solve for 100 percent unless you have really really thick filters the bat system is the best available technology which we've covered previously those systems can and do really really clarify the liquid that's exiting the tank so those do have some benefit they've not really have been they've not really been around that long to make a huge determination. And by long, I mean like 60, 80 years. Like it's gonna to have to be a while before we really know how much it actually improves the situation. So by having a two chamber tank, you basically are gonna make it to where less debris goes into the drain fields. By having less debris get into the drain fields, you will increase the longevity of your trenches. So with all of this in mind, the state is forced everybody to now start installing these two chamber tanks so that way you can decrease the failure rate or at least extend the life expectancy of drain fields and you know if they don't make the rule people are going to go with whatever they want to go with and if everybody's used to doing the one chamber tanks that's what you're going to get as far as the cost difference between the two goes in my opinion it's negligible like it's not that much more to have a two chamber tank versus a single chamber tank I will say though, it is much better to have concrete compared to plastic. You'll see people use plastic tanks quite a bit. Uh, usually it'll be like weird site conditions or maybe it was a budgetary concern. 
but people will use the plastic tanks and I'm not a huge fan of them because they just don't seem to last as long. Most of the plastic tanks in our area, regardless of what the manufacturer tells you or what the installer tells you, almost all of the plastic tanks that I see usually only get about 15 years, maybe 20 years before they have to get replaced. I come across so many of them where they're just crushed, collapsed, or starting to collapse. And that's a problem. So most people nowadays, we just use concrete. Concrete's very, very readily available, works really well, and it lasts for a very long time. So by state code, you have to have a two chamber tank. Most contractors will just stick to whatever the state code says. And you might get somebody who doesn't play by the rules, but that's a no, no, you gotta make sure you play right. But I do think that it is beneficial as a homeowner yeah it's gonna be a little bit less aesthetically pleasing because now you have to have two manhole risers to clean both sides and if you got an installer telling you you don't have to clean the second chamber they are wrong end point you need to pump both sides of the tank right now <clears throat> with two chamber tanks in our area they're just rectangular boxes with manhole risers on either end your area might have a different shape different style that's fine everybody does it a little bit different but in our area this is how we do it I hope that you found this informative. If you gained any value out of this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. I have more videos posted every day on the World of Well and Septic. Leave a comment below. What size tank do you have? What style of tank do you have? Do you have a two chamber tank? Do you have a one chamber tank? I look forward to that conversation below and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.